Freeman Dyson, a magical name to Yuri Atsitanov. We've flown from St. Petersburg, Russia, to meet the prize-winning and much-decorated scientist traveling from Manhattan through New Jersey to Princeton University. Yuri Atsitanov published an article augmenting Freeman Dyson's idea of a Dyson Sphere. The Dyson Sphere is to be a ring of artificial planets circling the sun to accommodate Earthlings when the Earth, for whatever reason, becomes uninhabitable. What Dyson didn't solve, and for which Atsitanov is proposing a solution, is how to prevent the ring from being pulled closer to the sun and therefore burn up. Dear James Schlosser, very pleased to meet you. I am Yuri Atsitanov. Freeman. Yes, Freeman. <laughs> That's me. Good. Well, that's Atsitanov, the inventor of the space elevator, friend of the late science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke, believes it inevitable that Earth will either be impacted by a meteor or the sun will become too hot or climate change will threaten humans with extinction. Dyson believes any technically sophisticated society should be able to create artificial living spaces outside the Earth. Yes. It was 24 years ago that I wrote it, so I've had to refresh my memory. Now I've just recalled all the, some of the, the main arguments that I used in that article. Dyson is a theoretical physicist, mathematician, and is renowned for his work on quantum electrodynamics, nuclear engineering, astronomy, and other studies. For Russians, 20 million dead during World War II is seared into their memory. And Atsitanov recalls his part in 1941 as a 12-year-old of clearing the roof of his Leningrad home of German firebombs. Perhaps this experience began his interest in science. Extinguish the fires which the Germans were firing, uh, incendiary bombs that the Germans were sending. 20% of the houses were wooden. Yuri Atsitanov maintains that Soviet restrictions, rather than hindering him, often led him to unexpected and more productive new collaborators. A colleague, for instance, had read in a foreign journal that the Americans had developed a material which could be stretched to 400 kilometers. At that distance, gravity is significantly weaker. It is that principle on which Yuri Atsitanov based his idea of a space elevator, which might lead to a radically cheaper form of space travel. So he read that there was this new material. You could build a rope 400 kilometers long. At 400 kilometers, uh, the gravitational pull will be uh, significantly less. The, the um, centrifugal force reduces effective gravity. And that is correct. I'm pointing. Yeah. yeah. Having learned from Yuri about his life during the Soviet era, I was curious to learn Freeman Dyson's view on Soviet science. In Russia, Biology was ruined. Eisen is of the opinion that while biology was compromised, Soviet science, especially physics and mathematics, flourished perhaps more than in the West. It was a disaster. And biologists were really wiped out. But, but physics and mathematics did well. Because they were not political, physics and mathematics attracted because the brightest people. Political. Physics actually did better than it would have otherwise, in thinks fact, Dyson because it was an escape from the oppressive regime. So right young people could go and study physics and the party didn't understand what they were doing and that was fine. And it's also a fact that they produced a lot of good science and the tradition was maintained of being in, 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 independent. I mean, in fact, the scientist Kapitza had an extraordinary connection with Stalin. I wrote a letter to Stalin to say that such and such a person should not be executed, Landau in particular, and Stalin listened. And so he was able to maintain some kind of independent standing. And he had to be very careful, of course, but he was also an unusual character, a very courageous man. And 
In a similar way, Dyson thinks that physics continued to be practiced in Germany and Japan during the war more than elsewhere because science there was seen as separate from the war and so scientists were more free to do what they wanted. Because Hitler was not interested in science and neither was the Japanese emperor. So they actually continued doing good science. Because here everybody was concerned with the war. And and the science had to be applicable to the war? Yes, here there was actually less science going on. So it's, it, it, it can work both ways. Inevitably, the question of the collapse of the Soviet Union, due according to Yuri Atsitanov, to there being too many egoists and not enough altruists in Russia at the time, otherwise communism might have succeeded. It is the main effect. First uh, uh, factor. Yuri Atsitanov, at last, pops the question. What does Freeman Dyson think of Yuri's solution for future solar colonies not to crash into the sun? So it has a variable di diameter that so they don't collide, yes. So that makes, that makes sense. And it is a variant of Pakrovsky. Yes. It is. No, that sounds reasonable. No, I should read this. So I will, I will make a copy of this. Перевести прямо с места вот эти два абзаца. Можешь вот эти два сейчас? I'll read the last two, 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 two paragraphs. Ах, вы даже по-русски можете немножко вычитать. А, ну так вот. Atsitanov has wanted to hear Dyson's opinion of his proposition since he wrote it nearly five decades ago, and now it has finally become possible. No, that's, uh, I agree with this, yes. No, that is, that's, that's quite right. Take it with you, he's got another copy. Yes, anyway, I agree with this. Atsitanov has what he came for, Freeman Dyson's tacit approval for his solution. The great Russian engineer, inventor and futurist Yuri Atsitanov feels vindicated. I remember uh, 1936. So is this the momentous meeting between two great minds where the birth of solar colonies using the sun's energy fully was realized? Or was it merely a thought exercise? Only the future can decide. In the meantime, we have time to contemplate these questions as we crawl back to Manhattan through the tunnel under the Hudson River in preparation for attending the Space Elevator Conference in Seattle.